Moses had gone up to the mountain to seek the Lord. And he was in a fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And he didn't know what was going down there, but God knew it. And they had at this time built a golden image that they called their God because Moses had gone for 40 days and 40 nights and they felt it was too long. And they needed something to look up to because they had been born and grown in the ways of the Egyptians and they needed something they can look up to to call God or to worship. And God said to Moses, I want you to go down and look at these, your people, Moses. These are your people. They are not mine. And you brought them out from the land of Egypt. And so you go down and take care of your people. And Moses will not accept that because he didn't. He will not take credit for what God has done. So immediately he said, no, 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 no. Father, let, let's set the record straight. Number one, they are not my people. They are your people. And number two, I don't have power to bring them out. You have the power and you brought them out. You told me to go to Pharaoh and to tell him, that says the Lord, let my people go that they might serve me. So they are your people. They are not my people. You see, so we have to be very careful that no matter how gifted and anointed we might be, no matter how successful we think we are, we must never take credit for what the grace of God does in any one of our lives. And we should, be, we should be very, very careful. Even if God is boasting of us like he did in the case of Moses and even Job. You see, he said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that he is the most righteous person on earth? Then one time he said, even though you provoke or you move me to destroy Job without a cause, he still holds on to his righteousness or his integrity. He hasn't compromised. And yet... Moses will not take credit even for what God said. He said, they are not my people, they are your people. Then he said, he said, Father, why are you angry with your people? And then he said to him, he said, you have to change your mind. Repentance means change of mind. It's, it means change of mind, that's what it means. And he said, I need you to change your mind. I need you to go back on this decision to wipe them out. And then watch something. That's why I said, you have to be selfless to be an intercessor. Because he said to Moses, I will wipe them out and then I will raise a great nation of you. That means I'm going to wipe everybody out and I will use your children. And Moses said, no, 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 no. This has nothing to do with my children. He has everything to do with the promise you made to your servant Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And he said, God, I don't want you to kill and destroy all these people and to raise up my kids. Some of us would have said, yes, Lord, wipe them out and use my children. But he didn't do that. He was selfless. He said, God, I plead for them. And these were the very people who prevented him from entering the promised land. It was because of them he didn't enter the promised land. The same people. But he pleaded for them. And the Bible didn't tell us what became of the children of Moses. But God gave him a choice and an opportunity to wipe out the children of Israel and to raise up his children in place of the children of Israel. But he didn't accept that. And he said, Father, I need you to remember your promise. So in petitioning God and inter interceding, we must deal with him according to his promise according to the covenant, according to his own word and his purpose. And he said, remember the promise you made to Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, that you will make him a great nation, and you will raise his seeds, multiply his seeds upon the face of the earth. And if you wipe them out and kill them, the Egyptians, the heathens, will say that you are unable to keep your promise. It will not make you look good. Moses was more concerned about God's name and God's glory and God's image and God's integrity than he was about himself. 
So as a true intercessor, to move God, you have to tread very, very, very wisely and intelligently. And you must petition him as it relates to his promise, his covenant, his purpose, his integrity. For we know that if we pray and ask of him anything according to his will, he does it. So prayer and an intercessor does not mean you can just come before God, pray anything, ask anything. It has to be in accordance with his will. It has to be about his purpose for humanity, his agenda for nations, for families, for individuals, for churches, for cities. And if we come before him and plead for mercy and ask him to remember the promises he has made and his agenda and destiny and mandate concerning us, our sons and our daughters, our families and our churches, our communities and our cities and our nation and our religious leaders and our political leaders and our fathers, our mothers, our wives and our husbands and our grandchildren. If we remind him of his purpose, his agenda, not our purpose, not our will, not our agenda, but his God will rise to the occasion. He will respond accordingly and he will show himself strong and mighty. If you believe it, wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, put your hands together and say yes. So Moses said, Father, he said, Father, I need you to take into consideration that it is your name that is at stake. Your promise is at stake. Your integrity and your covenant is at stake. It's not about the children of Israel. It's about your original intent. It's about the things that were spoken long in eternity before time began. It was about a promise you made to Abraham before all of these children of Israel were born. Before any one of them became a clot of blood in their mother's womb, you made a promise. It is your promise that is at stake and not them. So don't look at their mistake and their rebellion and their disobedience. Don't look at their lawlessness. Don't react to their disobedience, stubbornness, stiff-neckedness, and the lawlessness and the rebellion to act. And he pleaded with God. And reminded God of his promise and said, I need you, Father, to realize that this is not even about the children of Israel. It is all about you, the nations. The nations will accuse you. And God cannot be accused. The nations will say that you were unable to keep your promise and your covenant. And that's why you wiped them out in the wilderness. The Bible said that God hearkened. He hearkened to the petition, to the intercession, and to the prayers of Moses. But realize something too. God understood the power, the strength of an intercessor. Because he said, after God has set his case before Moses, and I've told Moses the reason why he has to wipe them out and kill them all. God said, Moses, having told you my reason, now leave me alone. Look at it. He said, leave me alone. Okay, verse 10, now therefore, verse uh -huh. 10, uh -huh. now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them and that I may consume them. And I will make thee of thee a great nation. You see, here, here God is saying, he said, he said, Moses, I recognize the rules of engagement and the protocols I have set myself. That even though I'm God by myself, and I am God alone, I sit on the circles of the earth. I do as I please. I'm capable of doing anything, but I'm subject to my own word. And the protocols I've set in place. That I can't do this without you. So he said, leave me alone. Let me loose. 
Don't stand in my way. Don't intercede. Don't intervene. Don't get involved in this. Stand aside and let me loose to go after these people. And let my anger, let my anger wax strong or hot against them and consume them. And then he said, I will make a great nation of you. That is powerful. But that, though it's true, must not get into any one of us head that because God needs us as intercessors because if you look at Ezekiel 22, 30, 21 he said God sought for an intercessor one like Moses to stand in the gap before him that the land or the nation would not be destroyed and he found now at this time he had found an intercessor he had an intercessor and he said this time I don't want you to stand in the gap I want to destroy these people for their rebellion and stubbornness and stick neftness. I want to wipe them out. So stand aside. Don't stand in the gap. Let me come after them and wipe them out. And Moses said, no, Father. I can't let you do that. Mercy, Lord. Mercy. I'm standing my ground. Though I know I'm flesh and blood, but I also understand that these people have provoked you and don't deal with them according to their wicked ways. The Bible said, if the Lord shall count iniquity, who shall stand? No one can stand if the Lord shall count iniquity. Because we have the sins of the flesh, the sins of the soul, the sins of the spirit. Yeah. And the Bible said, that let him that thinketh he stands, take it lest he fall. So no one no one is saved until the race is over. And until you can say like Jesus said, it is finished. And until you can say like Paul said, I have finished my course. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. The battle is ongoing. It's a daily war and a fight. 